Starting at 8, uh, students go to the lectures, to the classes, to the seminars, and in the afternoon they go to the lab. This lab work is organized in a different way. In some branches, inorganic and organic synthesis, for example, you can organize your time individually for other, research, for other labs where you use big machines. Of course, it's more organized, then you have to come to a distinct time to have this uh, machine available. This is the bachelor course. It is uh, very strictly organized, and the students normally pass it within the six semesters. The following master education is differently organized. Differently means here we have not so restricted courses. Here in principle, during the following uh, four semesters, the students can organize their study life themselves. They can focus to the area of their interest. Of course, there are basic rules. The basic rules, for example, say you cannot just take classes in inorganic or organic or physical chemistry. You must take a distinct amount of classes from all branches of the educational plan. But which of them you, your choice is? This is your problem. You just have to make sure that you not just understand after the four-year masters what inorganic synthesis is. You must also understand organic and physical chemistry. But this is a very open system, and here you have a huge number of different topics where you can select from. So every student finds the cause of his interest. And in addition to this uh, practical training and lectures, we have a system of research labs. When we had well-organized training labs for the students in the bachelor course, this is no more the case at the master level. At the master level, the students are free to select from the professors the persons and the work of their interest, and then they go to the professor, ask, can I go to your lab for the next eight weeks? Then the student receives a small research project. Normally, he works together with a PhD student and makes a more or less independent research. The students are quite happy with this system since this gives a maximum degree of freedom uh, during the studies. And since this is a focus of our master degree, I want to go further and introduce within the next 10 minutes and then I have finished. Uh, the research groups of our uh, institute simply to make them visible, to say what is present at Freie Universität and between which research groups I can finally uh, select. We have research highlights in synthetic inorganic and organic chemistry, in catalysis, in bioinorganic chemistry, in supramolecular chemistry, polymer chemistry in bioorganic and medicinal chemistry, nanochemistry and drug delivery systems. We have a group that works with surface and material chemistry. We have a strong branch of theoretical chemistry and we have some professors that work with biochemistry and protein crystallography. The next few slides might be interested for research persons and PhD applicants and potential postdoc fellows. The instrumentation of our research institute is quite good. We have a number of diffractometers, so we, our crystallography is well established. We have a number of protein diffractometers, powder diffractions, and we have an own synchrotron beamline uh, at the big uh, institute in Berlin. We have several NMR spectrometers, electron microscopy, a collection of mass spectrometers, vibrational spectroscopy, and we will buy some new EPR spectrometers. So in principle, with one exception, everything 
what we need is present. The exception is the magnetic measurements. We don't have squid in Berlin, for example. But what do my colleagues do? Let's start with inorganic chemistry. A brand new professor on the left-hand side, uh, Sebastian Riedel, he makes basic chemistry of halogens, polo halogen chemistry, fluorine chemistry, and he's the master of matrix isolation spectroscopy, a method that is not so widespread in the world. He will establish that lab in our uh, institute. Dieter Lenz is a specialist in selenium and tellurium chemistry and fluorine chemistry. He has a lot of experience in organometallic chemistry, particularly with fluorinated ligands. Priprashit Sakhar is an Indian guy. He works with us now for more than one year. He is a coordination chemist, but to say this is too less, so he speaks about switchable systems. Uh, he is interested in complex compounds that have a co uh, cooperative functionality, where you have interactions between the metals, distinct interactions between metals and ligand systems. He is an expert in, in uh, electrochemistry, he, so he makes oxidation at the ligand side, at the metal side, interesting chemistry. He has EPR spectroscopy and is interested in magnetic interactions. Christian Müller works on catalysis and or inorganic synthesis. He is able to make phosphorus analogs of pyridine. We call it phosphenine, and these phosphenine have particular nice coordination behavior to metal ions. In my research group, when we don't make big molecules with lanthanides, we normally work with technetium and rhenium chemistry, organometallic chemistry for the medicine, radiopharmaceuticals, and inorganic chemistry. This is a molecule with an anhydrocyclic carbene and technetium, an organometallic compound. This is completely stable in water. We have another person, Nora Kulak, working on bioinorganic chemistry. Her personal interests are artificial nucleases and proteases. She wants to cut DNA with some uh, coordination chemical knives. The cleavage of DNA is their destination and their dream. In the organic department, we have colleagues which are very experts in organic synthesis, in advanced organic synthesis. This is Hans Reisig. He recently developed, I think, the ninth total synthesis of the toxic compound of strychnine. And he is very proud about this, since this is the most effective total synthesis in the lab. Inorganic chemists always don't understand this uh, hype to make a compound artificially, which can be made by a, natural comp by a natural plant very effective. But he likes this chemistry, and what we learn from this type of total synthesis is mechanisms. We learn what is possible in modern organic synthesis. And not only the 60 years old Hans Reisig is interested in that, also young guys like uh, our new colleague, uh, Matthias Christmann comes with the same ideas. He also is proud to make total synthesis of natural products, but he also is interested in organocatalysis and target-driven methods. So they are the expert in synthesis. Beate Koch is our bioorganic chemist. She is expert in amino acids and peptides, not only in natural ones, but also in artificial amino acids, for example, fluorinated amino acids. Her target is to modify peptides and to study the effects of the folding of the peptides and the proteins which are formed from these peptides. And finally, the target is 
peptide therapeutics. When you change some chains in the peptides, you change the properties and you can make therapeutically active compounds in this way. Christoph Schallauer is not just our new director. He is also our mass spectroscopist and he is an expert in supramolecular chemistry. He makes almost all molecules big and bigger in the gas phase, in the gas phase of the mass spectrometer. Fascinating chemistry. Polymeric chemistry is done by Rainer Haag and Stefan Seifert. Rainer Haag makes polymeric nanosystems and uh, Dr. Seifert is interested in supramolecular gel chemistry and microfluids. Both are targeted to drug delivery systems. The same holds true for Professor Calderon and this right person here uh, Christoph Böttcher is our expert in electron microscopy. We have one more colleague in the organic department. This is a junior professor, Dr. Chucke. He can also belong to the inorganic part since his speciality is organometallic chemistry, catalysis made with organometallic compounds, but he is organized in the organic part of our institute. The physical chemists of our, of our institute have in principle two directions. One is nanochemistry and the second is material sciences. Nanochemistry is uh, Professor Rühl, he is interested in nanoparticles and drug delivery systems on the basic of such nanoparticles and he also studies the delivery mechanisms with ultra-fast dynamics. He has particular spectroscopic methods established with that. He is the master of the big lasers. Thomas Risse makes surface chemistry, EPR spectroscopy, material science. The same point that also is served by Christina Roth she just began in our institute. He makes electrochem she makes electrochemistry and also some material science studies. Back to the nanotransporters we come with Professor Graf. She makes nanoparticles and studies interactions of nanoparticular systems with cells and with skins. Our theoreticians are uh, leaded by Beate Paulus. She makes uh, theory calculations on solid state compounds and uh, Christophe Tremblay, one of her accompanied professors, uh, is interested in the dynamics of such reactions. They are supported by uh, Dr. Andre, Dirk Andre. He is also an expert in solid state calculations, while uh, Walter Knapp is expert for soft matter. He models, for example, ion channels in natural photosystems with his calculations. I come to the end with two colleagues from the biochemistry, Markus Wahl, the protein crystallographer, and uh, Christian Freund, the person who makes protein chemistry. His speciality is NMR spectroscopy on macromolecules. This information might be interesting for persons on the postdoctoral and research level. The next information might be relevant for interested undergraduates. Since we have organized the courses that we deliver for the German students in a way that also international students, Brazilian students can uh, contribute and this is available on the website. You can simply search for Ciencias Sem Fronteras FU Berlin then you will find it immediately. And here I have prepared some pre-selected majors since not everything can be combined with everything. So I made a pre-selection of courses which work when you combine them together. So there, uh, my, uh, there is a, 
a couple of uh, courses combined, two inorganic majors, a uh, major of synthetic chemistry, analytical chemistry, spectroscopy, physical and theoretical chemistry, and I have organized it in the way that different classes are contained. So let's go for example, just for an example, uh, just as an example to inorganic chemistry two. This excludes radiochemistry, my favor. And here one semester, for example, uh, can be filled with lecture and seminars in bioinorganic chemistry, with a lecture in modern aspects of organic chemistry. This is a class that has changed permanently. You have fluorine chemistry, some year you have phosphorus chemistry, some year you have silicon chemistry, and you can fill the semester with two research labs, one 12 weeks, one eight weeks, and then you have a full level of credit points after this period. In addition to these pre-selected majors, when you find this PDF label, there's an uh, extra description of the content of these courses in German and also in Portuguese. Uh, to have an idea what will be the content, since the name sometimes does not say so much. Then I added some extras, extras, for example, some comments of Brazilian students who have been in Berlin before. I think this is much easier to you to come in contact with persons who know Berlin, who worked and learned in Berlin, than when I tell you how good we are. We are not just good. Sometimes we are also boring. And this information I cannot give you since I'm convinced I'm not boring, but the students can tell you. And so I, I've included a number of students from Brazil who worked in our lab. So one face you might remember, this is Seiler, who did the work from the research uh, talk. But also some other persons come from San Carlos, Rafaela, Petro Ivo come from here, Andrea comes from here, Murillo comes from here. So many people from San Carlos have been to Berlin and you can interview them. And on the website, I made simply a collection with links where they give some comments. For example, this is the comment of Barbara, a student of Santa Maria. You see they can survive the German winter with a lot of snow. And she commented from her point of view a little. And in most of the cases, there are also email addresses of the persons. I have asked them before if they agree uh, to act as an email addressee for further questions. All of them agreed so that you can t contact them self and learn more about the good sides and probably also the problems of learning in Berlin. So now I filled almost two hours. In addition to the five hours in the morning, I think this should be enough to me. And I'm pretty sure this is also enough for you. So if you are interested, come to Berlin and see yourself. Thank you for your patience and staying here. If you have questions, of course, you can ask. You can ask today or you come along tomorrow as you wish. Thank you. Because our undergraduate students, they go there, they can go there for one or two years. No, Centro Sem Fronteras has a one year. One year. But two semesters. Six months to study German. This is an addition to that. There is opportunity to come earlier, but I do not know if for Sensor San Fronteras it is six months or only three months. But they come in advance before the semester begins. They can come for a German course, and this is covered by the DAAD. It does not cause extra costs. But six months is enough. Yeah. Uh, Victor learned his German in six months. And he speaks, speaks it even today perfectly. It de how to learn German is always a question of the community. Uh, when you're in the community of only Brazilian, you will never learn German. Look at me. I have been so many times in Brazil. Do you hear my Portuguese? I have none. 
since I was not pushed to learn Portuguese, since I always were with friends who speak fluently German or English. And so I did not have the motivation to learn Portuguese at a sufficient level. When you are in a community of a mixed group, when, where the only joint language is German, then you learn it uh, quite easily. It depends on the group. Uh, Hui, for example, our Vietnamese student, learned half a year German, but his German was in the, at the level of my Portuguese. To learn German is not a major thing. I, I should highlight this, since for most of the studies, it is better to learn or to speak sufficiently English. Uh, I see it problematic with the German. Of course, it is nice when our students speak German, but in the university, for a university level, you have a double problem. When you sit in the audience of a class that is taught German, you have two complicated things. You have the complicated chemistry together with the boring language. So when you do not have the language problem, since you speak sufficiently English and you, have, you understand enough English, then you have just the chemistry problem. And this the whole community has. When you double the problem, the language problem and the chemistry problem, then you will not be happy since you have to learn much more than the others. I recommend to learn English since this is sufficient at the university. And when you are once in Germany, you have enough time to learn some German to survive in the city. Since when you come from Berlin to smaller cities, of course you cannot expect that the people speak English there. But this is the same in Brazil. Uh, in Sao Paulo, it's no problem. At the university here, it's no problem. But then you go to the bakery, pan, not bread. <laughs> Hundreds of questions tomorrow. So again, thank you for coming and have a nice evening.